Welcome back to part two of Images and History of Architecture and Industry along Winchester's Railroads. In this portion, we'll discuss the groceries and produce, particularly relating to the apple industries in Winchester. We will start off with one of the very earliest and one of the most long-lasting businesses in Winchester. Baker & Company had roots back to 1780 and the distinction of being the Valley's first wholesale grocery. The Bakers were early adopters of rail transportation to increase their business. According to Morale Calbian, the Baker & Company wholesale grocery moved from Loudon Street to Cameron Street in 1837 to take advantage of the new Winchester and Potomac line. These buildings were destroyed by fire in 1868, so what remains was rebuilt in the 1870s. The complex included multiple rail spurs serving the warehouses, flour mill, feed mill, grocery store, and fertilizer storage. Some of those buildings are still standing today. You can see the traces of the tracks that passed between the grocery store that fronted Cameron Street and the fertilizer building. And there are a few ghost signs painted on the Baker Street walls remaining on the fertilizer building, which was perfect advertising as people arrived in town on the train to see Baker and Company on their way to the depot. The bakers carried all manner of essentials. Coffee, sugar, molasses, flour, salt, household goods. But uh, they followed German Smith's model for growth after the Civil War. When the cash was scarce, they bartered their goods for eggs and other local produce. This local produce was then shipped to Baltimore and Washington, D.C. for sale. Here we have some reports on the shipments made of various uh, produce and eggs from about 1869 to 1876. The stone building on Baker Street served as the grocery warehouse. The large wooden doors open right at the railroad tracks, and goods could be loaded and unloaded practically an arm's length from the railroad cars. This stone building was the last stone warehouse that has continuously been used for storage purposes, and we are very lucky that Habitat for Humanity has restored this building for their offices. And yes, they do still have some storage in this building. After the bakers built up the grocery business, they also started to improve their flour milling facilities. Flour was actually Winchester's largest rail export until the early 1900s, and you can see this reflected in the size of the Baker Steam Flour Mill building. Like the Winchester eggs, the Baker Crystal Flour was advertised heavily in Washington, D.C. in the early 1900s. The two versions of the ads appealed to both home cooks and professional bakers. After 1916, the Baker Mill produced flour under the name the Winchester Milling Corporation. The building was demolished in the early 1960s. It has since been incorporated into the neighboring Glaze properties as a parking lot. Speaking of Glaze lumber, lumber was integral to the railroads. Uh, you needed it to build the railroads themselves. Winchester and Western, one of the rail lines that operates here, actually was organized to reach lumber assets and you also needed lumber you know to make shipping containers to ship these goods in the most enduring local lumber manufacturer here is glaze and brothers founded in 1854 and hailed as the largest lumber mill in the valley at that time the buildings on cameron and fairfax lane have changed very little over the years Still surviving are the recently restored office and a sales location, which originally sold the wooden products like doors and window sashes. 
That building may have uh, been visited recently for some much different merchandise uh, as the Apple Blossom Store. For anyone that lives in the northeastern area of town known as Virginia City, you may live in a house built by Fred L. Glaze, or at least built with Glaze supplies and plans. As a director of the Virginia Woolen Company, Glaze was part of that force that built or supplied the raw materials and plans for the mill employee houses to keep them happy and contented while they were working here in Winchester. Glaze has been consistently praised as one of the most adaptive businesses in Winchester. In 1910, with a new fireproofed planing mill at his disposal, Fred L. Glaze and Harry F. Bird announced they would go into barrel-making business together. Now, you might be wondering why barrels, of all things, would be a good line of business in 1910. This year was a watershed year. This marks the transition from wheat and flour as Winchester's main rail export to our most famous product, apples. That year was the largest apple season to date for the Cumberland Valley Railroad, with approximately 90,000 barrels of apples shipped. Every day from July to November, a special apple train left Winchester about 6 in the evening, carrying 40 to 50 loads of apples. They were shipped from Winchester all over the United States, up in the Dakotas, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Chicago, Dayton, Cleveland, Boston, New York, Jacksonville, Pensacola, Mobile, New Orleans, and scores of other large cities. And many were shipped to Glasgow, Liverpool, Germany, and France. To promote the product, the growers had their names stamped on the barrels, and practically all the principal growers also had the words Virginia product printed on the labels. As the apple output rose each year, more storage sheds were built on Fairmont Avenue along the Cumberland Valley Railroad line. Along with the storage, they also needed containers to pack the apples in to ship them. Today we think of shipping apples in crates, but Virginia used barrels into the late 1930s. Near the storage sheds was the most publicized of the barrel makers in Winchester, the Virginia Barrel Company. Virginia Barrel Company was organized in 1910 from Ohio interests. In 10 years, it became the largest barrel manufacturer in the state. They produced the standard apple barrel, a baby barrel, which held about a bushel and a half of apples, wire-bound duplex apple boxes, and New England-style gift crates. They also commissioned a mammoth wagon, an exceptionally fine wagon specially made to carry 338 empty barrels at one load. As you might guess, packing apples in barrels meant that only the very top layer would be visible for inspection, and some apples would be lost to spoilage and bruising. And the quantity of a barrel was too much for an individual to buy. It took some persuading that the new crates, like those seen at the nearby Butler and Brother Packing Company, would be suitable replacements for barrels by holding a full bushel when packed, and the lids can be nailed down without forming a bulge, thus eliminating bruising. Virginia Barrel Company and Butler and Brother were located along Wick Street, which has changed dramatically over the years. The Barrel Company was adjacent to the cold storage buildings, while Butler is located in what is essentially a parking lot at the old National Fruit Office building. There are still a few traces of the old rail lines visible, especially if you were on foot in this area, but the buildings disappeared relatively recently, possibly in the 1980s. As the apple crops increased every year, it began to strain the railroad's ability to ship the apples. The astute local fruit growers saw the need for cold storage plants to protect their crops and not flood the market with apples. 
In 1919, reports were that more apples are being shipped to the Winchester ice and cold storage plants for storage than are being shipped out. Two of these plants in the North Cameron Street area are the Winchester Cold Storage and the C.L. Robinson Ice Factory and Warehouse. Winchester Cold Storage was organized in 1917 by the local growers specifically to handle their apple storage needs. Additional buildings went up in 1920 and 1929, raising the total capacity to 1.3 million bushels, the largest apple storage facility in the world at that time. They are still in business today, and while they report they handle the same volume of fruit, it only makes up about 25% of their business now. The other 75% includes diversified cold storage for many other products. You can see more pictures and history at their website, www.wcslogistics.com. The second warehouse in the North Cameron area was the C.L. Robinson plant. Robinson developed businesses in ice and coal in Fairmont, West Virginia, before buying the W.H. Palmer Ice Plant in Winchester in 1902. The ice factory had a daily capacity of 20 tons and supplied ice within about a 50-mile radius of Winchester. After Robinson retooled the Palmer plant, he then added a 70,000 barrel storage capacity sometime by 1911. The Robinson plant was still the main ice factory for town, and as such they had a tie to another long-standing Winchester business. Robinson was also the proprietor of Snap Foundry. A one-story flat roof building constructed circa 1910 became Snap Foundry's main machine manufacturing shop. It was located on North Cameron Street near the freight depot. Snap Foundry produced the Robinson Power Ice Saws, which cut the large blocks of ice into 12 to 25 pound pieces. This was a perfect symbiotic relationship, having the ice saws produced just down the street from the ice factory, and Robinson attaching his name to the Snap Foundry product in the national advertising. Snap Foundry was rehabilitated in 2009, and today the building is used by the Department of Social Services. After Robinson's death, his ice factory was retooled again by the Ohio-based Zero Pack Company and operated as a processing plant from 1932 to 1998. They would produce sliced apples, and also worked with cherries and peaches. The Zero Pack building is still waiting for a comprehensive redevelopment plan at this point. So far, we've talked about businesses that have used the highest quality apples. There are also uses for the second and third grade apples. And here we'll finish up our look at the apple industries with three companies that did other apple processing. The Winchester Times-Dispatch reported in 1919 that the local vinegar and canning factories are consuming virtually all the second and third grade apples. There were two such businesses located side by side on Fairmont Avenue along the Cumberland Valley Railroad line. National Fruit was founded in 1908 in Alexandria, Virginia. Winchester was their second vinegar factory location, opening in 1915. After the Alexandria factory was damaged by fire and never reopened, the company moved its headquarters to Winchester, first to the George Washington Hotel, and then into their own building on Fairmont Avenue. White House brand applesauce became the main product of the Winchester plant in the 1930s. You can see on the Sanborn maps how the cider tanks have diminished through the years. 
Today, the company is still locally owned, and all of the White House brand apple processing takes place here in Winchester. Just down the street is the Shenandoah Valley Cider and Vinegar Company, which opened in 1910. They had a termination of the Cumberland Valley Railroad line in front of their building. You can see it with a circle on the map pointing out where they had dumped their empty apple barrels after unloading. In 1919, the buildings, which had been made of wood, caught fire. Undaunted, they immediately rebuilt in concrete for the shipping building and with historic bricks repurposed from the old Charlestown, West Virginia jail, which had been made famous for where John Brown had been held. The bricks were used to produce the vinegar manufacturing building. Today, National Fruit has taken over and is using most of these buildings. The final vinegar producer in Winchester was the Heinz Company, which was located on the B&O or the Winchester and Western Line. The plant was adjacent to the O'Sullivan Rubber Company on Valley Avenue, which made it the furthest business from Old Town Winchester that we'll talk about today. When most of us think of Heinz, we think of their ketchup. But in the early 1900s, Heinz also made apple butter, apple jelly, apple cider vinegar. Even their ketchup contained between 25 to 50 percent apple pulp as a sweetening and thickening agent. It's hardly surprising that a branch factory was located in Winchester to take advantage of our local apples. The Winchester plant was used for vinegar production. On the map, you can see the apple bins, press house, and the tank building. From a 1910 promotional booklet produced by the Heinz Company, their apple cider vinegar was made from the pure juice of fresh apples only, thoroughly fermented, clarified, and aged to a degree that preserves the full natural flavor and aroma of the apple. In addition to controlling the manufacture of all their equipment and tanks, Heinz produced their own specially branded line of cars for the transportation of vinegar in bulk between its various factories and branches. Each of those rail cars had a 10,000 gallon capacity. The company's exacting standards were usually not the cheapest route, so Heinz relied on volume and smart advertising to help offset their higher expenses like this joint Heinz and Apple Blossom ad from 1941. Although Heinz is still going strong as a national brand, the vinegar factory in Winchester closed towards the end of the 1960s or early 1970s, and the area has been absorbed into the neighboring O'Sullivans.